show it's wet. It's okay, it's just water. Like an adorable little two headed monster. Good morning, little guys. Let's see how you're doing. Oh, how was my little wobbly chick? So, the last time you guys saw one of our videos, you probably saw that we only had one chick hatch. Well, after that video, I let the incubator continue to run. We ended up hatching out a bunch more ducklings and we ended up hatching out one more chick. But that one more chick is this one right here. It actually needed an assisted hatch, like I had to help it out of the egg. And honestly, it's not doing really well. It's got this problem where it doesn't seem like it can stand on its own two legs, like it topples over. I've tried building braces for it. So far that hasn't helped. I'm giving it more time. I mean, it's still only, I don't know, about three days old. I've got it inside here with the other chick that I hatched out because I felt like my little chick needed a buddy. I didn't want to leave it alone. And since the other chick that was with all the ducklings was kind of like the odd gal out or odd guy out, I decided to keep them together here inside this little mini incubator setup. I've got a heat lamp that I use. They've got water, they've got food, grit. Let me give you some fresh food, you guys. For this little, little one, I've been trying to help it eat. Like every couple hours I've been coming in here and moving it so that I can try to get it to peck at some food. Also get it a little bit of water. Eat it, eat it, eat it. That's so good. Yeah, keep eating. You know, it's interesting. They're both barred rocks, I think, or they look like they're both barred rocks. It's funny that those are the only two out of all the eggs I hatched that are making it. I'm gonna keep trying my best here. But one of the things I've come to learn about raising baby birds like this is oftentimes when they're this weak and they have this much of a problem, they might not make it. And you can do your absolute best and it's okay to do your best, but just know that the end might not be good. Let's stuff just a little bit more food down your gullet, huh? Like a mama bird feeding a baby bird. Okay, there you go. All right, we'll put our heat plate back in. I'll have you partially in and partially out. Hang in there, little ones. If you're doing good, just keep working at it. Good morning, Molly Wobbles. How's my kitty gal? Let me see, can I see your eye? How are you looking? Oh, you're looking better. All right, Molly, I think you're ready to head back outside. You wanna come with me? Let's go. Come on, sweetheart, we're going outside. Out we go, Molly Wobbles. Freedom! Yep, you're back outside. And don't worry, that stray cat that you got into the fight with, He's not around anymore. So yeah, according to Cole, the feral cat that we rehomed is doing well. Even though Molly's walking around looking really nervous, I think she's happy to be back outside. Of all of our barn cats, she's like the most likely to want to be a house cat, I think. Okay, let's get our chores going for today. So I'm trying to trap a skunk right now. The same skunk that ate daddy's babies. So the way I like to trap skunks is you use a bait that my cats won't like. So. You can use cat food to catch a skunk, but then your cats are gonna go in the trap. You use eggs, your cats aren't gonna go in the trap. But no skunk, but we will try again tonight. Toby dog, come. Good morning, buddy boy, how you doing? You've been rolling around in the mud all night, oh boy. Yeah, whenever it's dirty and wet, like it was last night. Toby dog usually looks filthy. How are my ducklings doing this morning? Hey guys! Everybody seems like they're doing really well. You guys are full of energy, huh? Well, you're a little nervous though, it's okay. Don't worry, the big scary giant isn't gonna hurt you. So as you saw at the beginning, and as you see now, the ducklings are doing really good. We ended up hatching out a grand total of 42 ducklings. So at one point, we actually had the most ducklings we've ever had on our farm, but we've since sold a few. We're now down to about 37. They're all doing really, really well. They seem super healthy and they're vigorous and they're playful. For those of you guys wondering about my, my hatching percentages, I actually looked at it. I, I ended up putting in 62 eggs into the incubator. So 42 hatched. So that's two thirds of them. That's like a 
67%-ish hatching rate. And honestly, there were, were two that were assisted hatches that didn't make it out of the assisted hatch. And so honestly, it's even higher than that. So probably one of my best hatching rates too. For those of you guys wondering what I did differently with the ducklings versus the goslings and why my hatching percentages were so much better, the answer is nothing. I actually did everything exactly the same. I think the one difference I have is just ducklings are easier to hatch than geese. And that's just maybe something I need to come to learn and accept. But yeah, overall, these little ones are doing absolutely phenomenal. Hey, Abby Dabby Doo, how are you doing? How's my Abby Dabby Doo? Yeah, how are you doing? Good to see you, sweetheart. Look at these two naughty drakes that didn't go to bed last night. Release the Quackers! <laughs> So yeah, my Kraken ducks, in case you guys are wondering, are the parents of those little ducklings. So amongst those ducklings, you're gonna see Khaki Campbell genetics, Cayuga genetics, runner duck genetics. I'm very curious to see how those ducklings grow and mature and see what they end up looking like. You know, some of them are standing very much upright like a runner duck. Others are much like lower, like they're a Cayuga or a Khaki Campbell. I had one runner duck drake and I had two Cayuga drakes and I had one Khaki Campbell drake. And then the moms were all mixes of stuff. Speaking of moms, how are things going with my goslings? <laughs> I'll let you out later today once I lock Abby up. Abby still gets so crazy playful with the little birds. Like it's, it seems like it's a matter of the smaller the bird, more she wants to play with it, which is also the bigger risk that she has of killing it. And so I've gotta be very careful. Abby, I know you're still learning. You know, Abby dog is actually coming up on her eighth birthday. Yeah, you're getting to be a big girl, you know that, but you still got a lot of teenage puppy energy in you. That's for sure. Kobe, what are you checking out? Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm getting ready for Abby's next heat, which if that happens, it means she's going to have to start wearing the chastity belt again. How are you doing, Mama Goose? Still just sitting on your nest? I bet you any day now you're going to be hatching something. And if you don't, I'm probably going to have to take you off the nest, but we'll see. I've got high hopes for you. What you got there, little baby Ginny? Oh, looks like Ginny caught a chipmunk. You were becoming as brutal a killer as your mom, except you still like to play with your food a bit more. I really hate poultry netting and I wish there was a better way. Got a couple ideas I'm working on. Nothing that I want to do just yet. Morning ladies and buck. Just here to collect the eggs and then I'll send you on your way. Send me on my way. Nope, you're not getting out yet. Nope, hey, stay back. I've learned through experience that you should always collect the eggs before you move the chicken track. Release the clucking. You know, Buck the Rooster, I think you're shooting blanks. So if I had to guess, this barred rock here is the mom of the two chicks that I have inside. And Buck is the father. She was the only gal he seems to manage to have uh, knocked up. Most of my other eggs that I tried to hatch with the chickens weren't there. I wonder if his leg injury has something to do with it. It definitely means that for our homestead level meat production, which, you know, last year I, I did where I hatched out a whole bunch of cockerel chicks and ultimately put them in the freezer in the fall. So the ducklings that I recently hatched out, I'll be taking the males and those will be the ones that go off to the freezer, the females will be added to our laying flock. We'll be eating a lot more duck than chicken in 2022, 2023. Good job, would you look at that? She's just going right to town on that cow pie. That's what I love to see. This is why it's so good to have the chickens following the cattle. 
Speaking of the cattle, how are my coos this morning, huh? Look at you, Jimi Hendrix, you're getting so big. But you pretty soon we're gonna see some horns poking out of the top of your head. You guys have one more day in this grazing lane before I move you further down the pasture. And you know, I gotta say, based on the experience I've been having here over this last, uh, I don't know, two months or so, of grazing them inside the permaculture orchard. I think the reality is based on the number of animals I have, I could easily just have them graze this space and never leave. Probably need more cattle. It's also probably my long-winded excuse for why I still haven't completed their fencing up top. I just keep finding other things and other activities that are competing priorities. And I will admit, I don't love the work of fencing. Fence! You know, I'm finding that as my own boss, there are some things I jump in so wholeheartedly on, and there's other things that I really just don't want to do, but it's got to be on me to push myself to complete it. And so I should be finishing it very soon. But like I said, I haven't had a huge reason to. I've been giving the cattle a lot more grass than they probably even need, and I could easily loop them through this permaculture orchard, maybe do it one and a half more times before I have to bring them into the barn for winter. And yeah, we wouldn't run out of grass. All right, now, usually I've been moving them actually two times a day, Today, I'll probably actually only let them move once because they still have a lot to graze down even right here. Watch this. I'm going to call them over here. They're all the way back at the other end now. Hey, cows. Come on, cows. I know that call worked for Abby, but uh, I can see it's working for the cattle too. Hey, cows. Come on, cows. Training them to come when I call them like that is super important because there's going to be times when I need to move them other ways. And using a call like that will help me get them to where I need them to go. And yes, my two boss cattle, Kurt Cobain and Audrey One, are always the first to arrive. And everybody else sort of follows in behind them. Anne, Ariel, and Annabelle are all sort of the less dominant cows. And then you have the calves coming as a pack. You guys were so good and you came exactly when I called you. You're probably easier to train than Abby. Fresh grass for everybody. Come on. Fresh grass, fresh grass. Hey, cows, come on, cows. <laughs> and they, they hop to it. See, what happens is, you'll notice these more desirable things to graze, like vetch right here. They make a beeline for it. It's like the first thing they're gonna eat. Then they're gonna go for some of these less mature grasses. And then they start to go for the weeds and the other crud that we don't necessarily want and they trample down a lot of the seed heads. You know, if you look through the pasture here, right, you don't see any of those purple flowers. Yet if you look through this pasture, you see all sorts of purple flowers dotting it. That's because they're gonna go through and eat all of that first, and then it'll eventually look like this. I mean, if I look back, say, 24 hours ago, the spot where I'm standing right now looked exactly like the spot that the cattle are in. Hey, Abby, I'm looking for vetch. I don't see any vetch. Do you see any vetch? See, the cattle all ate it down. Actually, if you guys watched the microscope video that I made a week or two ago, in that video, I actually put the vetch under the microscope. <laughs> You're such a happy dog. Oh, Molly Wobbles. You're such a happy cat. Good to see you out here. Hello, teenage goslings. How are you doing? Okay, Abby. Stay in your kennel and you can have your breakfast. It's time to let somebody else out. Hey guys, rise and grind. My dear Lord, what is this chaos? I left you guys alone for like 60 seconds. I just wanted to let Mama Goose and her kin out and like half the geese come in and everybody throws a party and completely disrupts the whole scene and eats most of the food. Closing this up for the day. So it's kind of funny, right? Those three goslings that were hatched out by the mother goose are gonna be quickly accepted as part of our main flock of geese because of the mother goose. While meanwhile, our teenage goslings that we hatched out about five weeks ago or almost six weeks ago, they are treated almost completely separate, even though genetically speaking, they're exactly the same. Oh, Molly. Yeah, that cut is looking better and better every day. I don't know if you guys can see it, but it's like right up there. All right, I know I got some hungry birds. Let's go. I 
hope you guys have enjoyed this update from the farm. I'm just going to be hanging out here playing with the ducklings and continuing to get them used to me so that they won't be so terrified. Oh, You guys are so adorable, you know that? Just wait until I give you a bag of peas probably in the next day or two.